I'm Vernon Brown, and I'm welcoming you all um, officially. Uh, you're going to get lots of welcomes uh, by the um, Stewards of Change um, Institute. And we're very proud to uh, feature the Stewards of Change Institute this year um, as the sponsor of the symposium. And over the last year, um, we have reformed um, the Institute, and I want to be able to introduce the, uh, the, some of our board members to you today. They're here. You're going to be hearing from Paul Wormley. He's right there. Um, Sid Gardner is out there. You should come on up, Sid. Um, and he's going to speak um, after I, I spend some time with you. Um, Bill Davenhall is also here. And Bill, thank you very much. And Carmen Nassario, um, who's the former um, assistant secretary of HHS, is in Puerto Rico. She has a teaching assignment. And so she wishes you all well. Uh, and what's exciting about what we're, where we're at um, at this point in time in, in the endeavor related to stewards of change is, is that we're, we've really come to a tipping point as it relates to advocacy, education, and convening. And, and we really want to have a broader base across the country um, and internationally um, to, to move towards interoperability um, truly becoming um, the, the basis from which we look at health and human services. And I'll throw in education, too as well. A lot of times the education folks uh, stay off to the side, but they are really super important as it relates to child welfare. In my experience, uh, this is our 35th year in child welfare in, this, in the great state of California, and I've seen everything within that, within that whole arena. And, and I, um, I think Ori was really great in framing um, the way in which um, the Stewards of Change uh, has gone f into the future. Um, as, a, as it relates to how we view um, the world. And we want to thank you for being participants in, 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 to, in this symposium and also into the future, too, as well. And so there is a future orientation. And I'm going to go back not to 32 millenniums, but I'll go back to the last millennium, uh, which is when um, uh, I, I, I met uh, Daniel, who's uh, my co-founder here. And that was in 1998. Um, and um, at that time, I was looking for a way in which to market uh, to recruit foster parents. I'm still marketing and recruiting foster parents today. It's a huge issue in this country, if none of you know about that. But it's, it's becoming a, a, a crisis across the country in finding good families to be able to support children who ha are, are, we take their care for them as the state. So I think that uh, at that point in time, I had no idea about a supply chain. Daniel was moving in from the private business sector. And I think I've infected him with the focus around child welfare and what we're doing. And so from that time into today, the, the eighth annual symposia, um, I, it, it would be important to kind of give a historical perspective. And a lot of people um, in the room don't know where this Doers of Change name came from, right? And I think it's really important to, to share this with you. Uh, it wasn't a good marketing name, though it is, you know. But it really it came as a result of work that Daniel and I were asked to come to um, Jacksonville, Florida, during the, as I call it, the de-evolution of child welfare in the state of Florida a number of years ago. Maybe you have you witnessed um, the, that um, during the, the Jeb Bush governorship. And we were asked by Annie Casey who we want to acknowledge is one of, the, one of the groups that has been a supporter of ours for many, many years and really formatively pushed us um, to the, where we are today in a lot of ways. So we were asked to come to support the formation of the Jacksonville region's um, new child welfare um, delivery system. And as you imagine, it was pretty chaotic. Right? I mean, massive change, change that they were overwhelmed by. And during, during our, the time that we were spending there, we, we, we sat there and, and you, you know, we're doing a process like you all do when you try to support people as they, as they go forward through a change process. And there was a point in time where we stood up and said to this group of people who were well-meaning and represented stakeholders from across the region and said to them, if you could see yourselves as the stewards of this change, would you see your, the, the, the focus and the, and the manner in which you are going about the work? Right? And that, has, that, that was the impetus of stewards of change. 
And so today we're here because of that issue and that focus, which is how can we be good stewards of change? And so when we get together with these kind of gatherings over the last eight years, we all feel like you're stewards along with us of that change. And so we want to welcome you um, in that spirit. And I want to thank the uh, new members of the board of directors. Their profiles and their vitas are in the packet. Please look at that. Please spend time with all of them during the course of the, of the uh, several days that we'll be together. And we really are inviting you <clears throat> to come together to be advocates, to educate, and to spread the, 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 what we think is truly an important opportunity in this, at, this, at this stage in the, in the country's history. And, and so I want to thank you again for that opportunity. I'm going to let Sid spend a bit of time um, giving his perspective on why he's uh, joined. Thank you, Vernon. Very, very briefly, um, Vernon and Daniel asked me to share uh, some thoughts on why I'm involved in this overall effort. and more particularly the Institute Board. Um, and the answer to that is fairly simple and short. When you're 71 and they ask you to do something new, you always accept in hopes that it will push the dementia back a few more weeks into, <laughs> it's a health thing. It's a, it's a, it was a cheap health measure that I was offered and you take those kinds of things. Um, I had spent, um, by actual count, 48 years thinking about what we used to call service integration and then collaboration and now interoperability, putting pieces together for people in health and human systems. Um, so far back in its origins that the places I worked were called the Budget Bureau, now OMB, and HEW, uh, now HHS. Um, taking the E out, I have to say, parenthetically and editorial, was one of the greatest tragedies for putting the pieces together that ever happened. Uh, end of parenthetical editorial. Um, but back in those days, uh, there were secretaries of health, education, and welfare, um, and leaders in the Bureau of the Budget who thought about what, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, we, th we might today think of as the holistic grail. Um, that quest that Ori talked about, the, the effort to take the part of the human mechanism that we all bring to bear that is unifying and the parts that are dividing and classifying and categorizing and rationalize them. And the Institute, very simply, seemed to me a place where that was going to go on, where a lot of you would be assembled periodically to share ideas and experience on the ground, practical front line, uh, at the policy level, in the funding worlds, in the legislative worlds as well. And that was exciting. I think that the two great challenges are uh, facing the Institute and all of this work are, can be boiled down to making sure that we do pay attention to the lessons of history. This isn't as new, despite this wonderful graphic uh, animated picture of what is new. We have been trying to put these pieces together for a long time. We started trying to link the military services in 1947. They still have intercommunications problems, as some of you know much better than I do. We still have first responders that can't talk to each other. We still have enormous new categorical programs through the DSM rolling out, thank you very much, psychiatric pharmaceutical industry, in which we've divided the world up in even more ways. And so, knowing that we've been down some of these roads before and really screwed it up, and that we don't have to remake every one of those mistakes, makes the history of all this quite important, I think. Old people tend to say that kind of thing, so discount it as you wish. <laughs> but if you're coming to this meeting with a largely a historical mindset, you're gonna miss some stuff. You're gonna miss some of the ways in which things worked and things didn't work, and the reasons why. And that part of the history is important. And I, I really value Ori's given us an even broader context for that. Second, the great balancing act in all of this work, it seems to me, can be reduced to the equation CS2. How do we balance cost savings and client success? How do we make this about that third rock group that we always leave out when we talk about the histories of rock bands, the Beatles, the Stones, and the Who. This work 
is increasingly about the who. Not how we do this, not the wonderful technological tools, but for whom, who will step forward to lead it, who will be the clients, the customers, the constituency in the communities who will benefit from it, who will advocate for it, who, the who. We can't leave that out, and I tremendously value the work that some of you have helped us to pull together around personas and ways of making sure that we don't leave people, the who, out of the conversations about the how and the what and the how much we're gonna pay for it and all of that. The Institute has a chance to do some of that work. You all will help us tremendously. I look forward to continuing the chance to talk with you and work with you through the Institute and the other forums that you all represent. Thank you. Thank you.